Good morning. Uh uh, that's not going to work. I'm going to say it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. All right. My name is Shirley Cherry, and I'm the director in the Office of Career Services. I have the Career Services staff, Tracy Knowlton. All right. Give it up. Give it up. Marguerite Carlton, job developer. Yolanda Ryder, walking slow. <laughs> Oscar Fuller. Y'all do know that we are the dream team, the best team on this campus, right? Give it up. Now, let's have some fun. Y'all like to have fun? Well, I do. Because you know what? I got a pocket full of money I want to give away today. Talk about money, 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 money. So what we're going to do, we're going to go way back, way, way, way back. Now, how many of you remember the nursery rhyme, roll, roll, roll your boat? Woo! Do it again? All right. So on the count of three, I want to hear you sing, roll, roll, roll your boat. One, two, three. One more time. Now, that was excellent. Give yourselves a hand. Now, I need a volunteer on stage. All right, come on. Hurry up, hurry up. We don't have but a second. Wait a minute. Both of y'all coming. Well, now I might run out of money, but let's see what we can do. Now, <laughs> well, I got three of y'all. Y'all all from Little Rock. Well, I don't know what we're going to do about this, but what, what I want you to do. Now, you heard Roll, Roll, Roll Your Boat, didn't you? Yes. Now, I want you to hit it and rap. Ooh. I want you to... We need a beat. All right. all right, give him a beat. Come on, y'all. Stop your feet. Okay. Come on. Come on, let's go. Let's go. You ain't got no time. Go on, we got your feet. Let's go. Come on, y'all. Let's get faster. All right. All right. All right. Give it to him. Give it to him. Roll, 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 one of you to come up here, but since you did, $20 gift card for each one of you. All right, all right. Now, I do, let me see, I do have some more money, but you know what? I have already selected the winners. Will Jalen Phillips, <laughs> Ricky Anderson. Now, you know what? They heard that some executives would be here. So look how they addressed y'all. <laughs> hey, they bought a J-O-B. So they dressed for the occasion. So Ricky is from Monroe, Louisiana. And he's majoring in biology. All right. Now, Jalen... Mm. He's from that little old town called West Memphis. I mean, I'm sorry, West Helena, Arkansas. <laughs> and he's majoring in management. Thank you. All right. 
All the money gone, y'all. Okay, now I need you to do something for me. I want you to write this down, okay? Did you hear me? See, if I don't see you writing, they tell me you're not interested in why you're here. First of all, let me see the show of hands of everybody that's already registered with the Office of Career Services. Wow, wonderful. Give them a hand. If you're not registered, we are located in Codwell Hall, Suite 202. Being registered with Career Services does not mean because you are a student here at the university. You need to come into our office to get registered with us. So, without any further delay, you got quiet, good. Turn off all of your electronics. Turn them off. We want your full attention because today we are truly blessed to have some executives here from Synchrony Financial. And I am going to bring to the podium at this time someone that I feel like I've been knowing about 20 years, and it's only been a few hours, <laughs> Mr. Burdell Lewis. And I will allow him to introduce the others that are here with us today. Let's give it up for Woo! Mr. Burdell Lewis. Thank you, Ms. Shirley. Good morning. Good morning. Come on now. Y'all just got through singing, row, row, row your boat. Good morning. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be here. You know, it's, it's funny, before I introduce my colleagues, I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you all about and how I was going to get the message to come across. And my man Jalen up front here helped me out. When you heard that you won something, the first thing you said was what? Thank you. Amen. Oh, amen. He said, amen. <laughs> so I am a preacher's kid, and I was trying to figure out a way that I was going to connect with you all. And I was talking to my daughter, high school sophomore. And I said, baby, what do you think I should talk to these, these young adults about? She said, I don't know, daddy. Just keep it 100. All right. So I'm going to ask a favor of you all. When I say, can I keep it 100, I want you all to say, yes, you can. Can I keep it 100? Yes, you can. Can I keep it 100? Yes, you can. All right. I'm going to ask you all that a little bit later as well. So as Shirley mentioned, my name is Burdell Lewis. I am a proud product of St. Louis, Missouri. Woo! STL, STL, I hear y'all over here. I am a vice president as well as general manager for the Synchrony Financial Organization. I first joined the organization in which was GE Capital at that time back in 2001. From an educational perspective, I have a bachelor's of science in business management I have a bachelor's of science in mass communication, and I have a master's in finance. To my left, I'm very proud to introduce Marcus Proctor, who is a national sales leader within the Synchrony Financial Organization. <laughs> Danielle Huggins, who is our oil and glass strategy leader. She's a proud graduate of the HBCU, North Carolina A&T. Immediately behind me, Ms. Trina Hill, who is responsible for all of our IT and disaster recovery within Synchrony Financial. I want you all to remember that because when I tell you a little bit more about our organization, you'll get a better understanding of how important she is to us. And then last but not least, Mr. Bill Buford, who is our grand opening strategy leader as well as a sales leader. What we want to do today is more about you all than us. We have five executives up here, five African-American executives at an HBCU that really want to answer any and all questions that you may have as freshmen. And this is important to us because we thought back when we were freshmen, we didn't have a clue. We know y'all think y'all know what y'all doing. Let me ask a quick question. How many 
people in the audience are the first one to go to college from their family? That's over half the audience. The first one to go to college from your family. So what I take from that is you all are standing on the shoulders of a lot of people. What I also take from that is your mom and daddies expect you to graduate with good grades so you can get a job and not come back and sleep in the basement. How many would agree with that? Can I keep it one behind it? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. I still got y'all. So, Synchrony Financial. How many people have heard about Synchrony Financial before Ms. Shirley mentioned it today? Not too many. How many have heard of General Electric or GE Capital? The majority of the audience. Synchrony Financial is a subsidiary of GE Capital. We are an 82-year-old company that's actually only two years old. We were part of GE Capital up until two years ago. Because we had everything compartmentalized, we were able to take our, our business, sit it over here, become our own entity. We did an initial public offering two years ago. And once that was complete, we were still a Fortune 500 company. We've only been around for a couple years, but we're the number one private label credit card provider in the United States. So I would imagine someone would say, well, what's a private label credit card? When you think of our client base, has anyone heard of Walmart? Anybody heard of Sam's Club? American Eagle? Gap? Old Navy? Banana Republic? Toys R Us? BP Gas? Chevron Gas? Ashley Furniture? Kawasaki? All of those are our business partners. So when you think of the credit card that has their name on the front of it, we're actually the bank behind the card. Thank you. We appreciate that. Does anybody in the audience have on our cards? Hey, I like that. We thank you. We, we, we not just thank you, we appreciate you. But more importantly, that's a little bit about synchrony. I want to talk more so about some opportunities that you all should consider in the future. I understand you're all freshmen. We have two programs. Neither one of them at this time is applicable for freshmen, but it's something for you to think about. One is an intern program, and the difference, or the, the, the thing about our intern program, it's a paid intern program. You do 10 weeks. Okay, I got it. Got a little too close. It's a, a 10 week program where you're paid to come participate within projects and endeavors within our business. The beauty of it is uh, we're in at least 14 different states. We're nationwide, but the beauty of this program is if you get into the program, we relocate you to that location for the summer, and all you have to do is show up with your suitcase. We furnish your, your lodging. We provide transportation back and forth to the office, as well as we pay you. That is something for you to consider in a couple years as you guys matriculate and do very, good, do, do very well in school. The other program we have is what we call our BLP or our Business Leadership Program. And it is a two-year program, 24 months, in which you do three different rotations within the business or throughout the business that gives you a strong uh, business assimilation. We have several different tracks that you can go into. As an example, HR, IT, risk management. What does risk management mean? For those individuals who had our card, someone had to evaluate your credit history to decide if we were going to approve you for that card or not. Also, marketing, sales, and IT. So I won't talk too heavily about those two programs because we look forward to potentially being back on campus in the future in which we can talk to you a little bit more about it. Today's discussion, again, is more so about you all. Can I keep it 100? Yes, you can. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit more, and then I'm going to allow you all to ask us questions. And what do I mean by questions? Any and everything that may come to mind. And we will be as honest as possible. When you think of corporate America, remember I said we are a Fortune 500 company. The majority of the business leaders do not look like us. When I look across the audience, 
at this HBCU, the majority of the students here look like me. For the ones who don't look like me, we're happy that you're here too, is one family. So when I say, when I say questions, an example may be, how does corporate America appreciate or what have they said about you wearing your natural hair, Danielle? Or how have you managed through that? Or you may say, Burdell, you're a really big guy. Have you had any feedback where corporate America may have wanted you to lose weight? You may say, Trina, you're into IT. There's not a lot of African and female, African American females in IT. How have you managed to grow your career? No question within boundaries, let's be respectful of each other, is off the table. But before we go there, when I think back when I was a freshman, many moons ago, many, many moons ago, I wasn't always focused. Actually, the majority of us were, were talking about this morning. We were not focused, and as a result, we got off to a bad start. For, for Bill, for Bill, he got off to a real bad start. <laughs> There's, to run the race, to win a race, it requires getting off to a good start. The one thing I really urge you all to do is a couple things. As Shirley mentioned, first and foremost, sign up for career services because they can be the avenue two to three years from now to get you in front of companies, individuals like myself, who can hire you, who can possibly get you a job. Being mindful that mom and daddy do not want you to come back home on the couch or in the basement. I promise you, if it has not happened now, in the next two years when you go home on holiday break, your room will no longer be your room. It's going to be a couch in there. She's going to have some flowers in there. You, it's not going to be your room. That's your first sign that you really need to focus in school. But again, can I keep it 100? You're down here at this great institution, good-looking people around you. All I say is work hard, play hard. If you do what you're supposed to do in the classroom, have as much fun as you possibly can outside the classroom. But the purpose of you being here is the classroom. It's not to have fun. That's the secondary reason for you to be here. I tell y'all a story. I talked about the internship. I talked about the BLP program. Our core qualification, our major qualification for you to be considered within my organization is having a 3.0. How painful do you think it is for me when I have young, innovative, intelligent students walk up to me and say, hey, I'm graduating with this degree. There we go. All right, I'll stick with this and I apologize, y'all. As I was saying, how difficult, how heartfelt is it for me when I have students walk up and I really like them. I like how they present themselves. I like some of the questions that they have. I like how they research our organization. And I say, what's your GPA? And they say 2.7. I can't even consider you for our program because you don't meet the core qualification. So often I hear, yeah, I got a 2.7, but my last two years I got north of a 3.5 once I got into my core curriculum. In, in all seriousness, the, th the first thing that comes to mind is this kid has been in college for four years. Their parents, their grandparents, their aunt, their uncle, their instructors are really happy and proud that they're going to graduate. And most companies are not going to give them the opportunity to get into an elite program or an elite organization because of their GPA. So once again, I urge you, I ask for you, I pray for you all, get off to a fast start. I'm not gonna stand up here before you all and say, don't have no fun. Have as much fun as you possibly can after you do your work. Second thing, whether it be Synchrony Financial, whether it be GE or GE Capital or any other organization, once you guys start navigating through your, your collegiate career, make sure you try to find some type of internships. The things that you learn in the classroom will help you 
but they will not be everything. There's so many other skills that you're going to need in your toolbox, in your suitcase, to be applicable in corporate America. Even if you want to be an entrepreneur, I know in this day and age, there's some people out there to say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm not going to work for nobody else. I'm going to work for myself. How many people want to be an entrepreneur? I can appreciate that. But once you become an entrepreneur, guess what? You still have to talk to your customers. You still have to talk to your suppliers. You still have to negotiate your pricing for whatever your product may be. You can learn that in class, but how to deal with others are the soft skills that you're going to need. And once again, because of that, I urge you, I ask you, I beg you to make sure that you leverage career services at some point within your at some point within your, your collegiate career. The last thing I ask you to do before I open it up for questions is leverage each other. This is not a super big campus. You all are freshmen. I'm sure you know at least 10 people today that you didn't know three months ago when you arrived. And you, once you continue to multiply that number, you now have a network. You cannot do it by yourself. So Deshaun may have an internship or land a job at company XYZ. He can come back and tell you about the experience. You may not have had that job. You may not have had that internship. But because of your network and because you're connected to him, he can provide you information to better prepare you. Leslie may have an interview with company ABC. She decides not to take that job, but she can tell you about some of the questions that they asked her in the interview process. I promise you, the older you get, once you get into your career, you're going to need others. You cannot do it by yourself. The takeaway is leverage each other. Get connected to as many people as possible. Participate in the volunteer activities that you have on campus. In saying that, I know some microphones out there. Um, we want to open it up for questions. Again, no question is a bad question. Because if you're thinking it, it's probably someone else out there who's thinking it as well. Um, can you describe your journey to like your well yeah like your journey to become an executive as an African American woman? I was just joking with Marcus about this. So I, I would consider myself um, actually a young professional more so than an executive. Um, but a lot of my journey was just around accepting and becoming comfortable with who I am as a woman and as a black woman in an environment that is not used to someone like me. Um, and so one thing that when I graduated school, you spend four years at an HBCU. You spend four years not having to worry about being black because it's your everyday norm. Right, And then I stepped out of that and went back into a corporate environment where okay, I spent I went back into a corporate environment where I was one of very few, and no one was there to teach me how to transition from college into the workplace nor the real world, because outside of adjusting to leaving my school, I still had grown up bills, grown up responsibilities. Um, and so that transition was definitely a, a milestone in my life. And what I just used is spirituality to keep me grounded, um, but also becoming self-aware and setting those goals and knowing that every day is not going to be sunshine, uh, but it makes you who you are as a woman and you have to figure out who you want to be as a woman to get there.
All right, I heard that you all have, um, you're located in many states. I was wondering, was Arkansas one of them? Bentonville, Arkansas. Bentonville? We do have an office in Bentonville. Uh, I think that office has probably 100 people that sit there, and that team primarily interfaces with Walmart as well as Sam's Club. All right. What about Texas? We have an office in Frisco, Texas as well. Um, one of the retailers that I didn't mention was J.C. JCPenney. So super large organization. They're based out of Frisco, Texas. So we have a contingency of people there too. Very good question. One thing I didn't mention, when you think of all those retailers across the United States, we also have what we call field sales teams. And those teams are geographically dispersed in every state pretty much because they go out and interface with the stores and try to educate them on training or better utilization of the products that we have in the marketplace. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just going to comment real quickly on just the whole moving aspect in your career. Uh, I've moved 12 times in my career. So a lot of times people think that you're going to be stationed in one particular area and, and that worked for me. It might not work for you. But I, I will tell you that taking advantage of moving around has given myself a lot of opportunities to advance myself in my career, have different exposures to different people, different cultures. And I think it's helped make me a, a, a decently well-rounded person. I got issues. You know, I, lay on, I lay on the couch sometime with my counselor. We're working through some things. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. But, but I think that uh, I think moving around is, is, is a good thing to do because it, it exposes you to a lot of different areas. And I know some of you are from the immediate area of Arkansas. So real quick story, my mother's from Camden, Arkansas, which is right down the street. So Camden in the house, you might be kidding me. Last name Williams, we'll talk about it later. Anyway, uh, but you know, uh, one of the things I really wanna talk about, you guys are all freshmen, and Burdell hit on it earlier. How many of you guys are gonna make sure that you get a 3.5 this semester? Hands, 3.5, okay, 3.5, okay? And the reason why I asked that question is that, you know, when I was in college, you know, Burdell talked about it earlier, I didn't start off too, too well. But when my brother came to college with me, I made sure that he got a minimum of 3.5 his first semester. And his first semester, he did get a 3.5. And then I left him alone. I said, okay, you know how to do it. And the reason why I'm really focusing on a 3.5, to Burdell's point, that is your entryway into a, a road of potential success. Okay, now I turned out okay, but it took me a little longer to get there. But I don't want you guys to go through what I had to go through. So focus on school, and then I'll be quiet and ask, let somebody ask another question. But everything you do does not need to go on social media. Because here, here's, here's the ultimate question for you. You're going to an interview, and I had somebody do this before. They went to an interview, and the person during the interview stopped and said, pull up your Facebook page. Now my question to you is, everything that you put on Facebook or your tweet, would you want your future employer to see or to know about you? Hmm, can I keep it 100? Yes, you can, sir. <laughs> um, question. Ms. Daniel, you asked one already. Yes, it, it, was a, um, it was a backup <laughs> question. I noticed that you said no one was there to help you transition into the real world. So do you believe that going to, well, the whole panel, do y'all believe that going to an HBCU prepares you for the real world? I can probably speak on that one. <laughs> um, it did. It, it absolutely did. It taught me how to be proud of who I am and where I came from and to never let anyone question that. And that, to me, that's, that's the fundamentals. That's the fundamentals of being successful. And granted, you go through your evolutions, you go through your changes, you deal with cer certain situations, um, but it really instills in you the pride that it takes to educate someone on what it means to be black or what a historically black college or university is because there's still a misconception out there. And I dealt with that first coming over to Synchrony. So you really have to hone in on what it is that you want to get from your experience and learn how to eloquently educate others on the purpose and relevancy of a historically black college and university. Oh, good morning. My name is Gary Jones from Kansas City, Missouri. My question is, how does one become a better investor uh, in regards to stocks and stuff? Take 
education, education, education. No, seriously, it's when I say education, it's the willingness to study. But the word that comes to mind for me is balance. You should take some potential risk, but then you should also be very conservative. Once you have a balanced portfolio, no matter what is taking place in the market, you'll be more comfortable. You don't want to be very aggressive and have all your chips on the aggressive side, but then compared to, compared to that, you don't, you don't want to be too overly conservative. I think it, recalls, it requires a balance, but more importantly, research, research, educate yourself before you make those decisions. I mean, just to add to that a little bit as well, is you have to invest in what you know and what you believe in. Like I'm a tech guy, right? Anything in the space, I love, right? I can tell you everything you ever wanted to know. So because of that, I do the research, right? And I make sure I'm up to date on really what's going on. So really kind of trust yourself. To Bedell's point, you need a balance. But also think about those things that you understand well. Good question. I'm sorry, say your name one more time. Alex DeRose from Chicago. I was wondering, does your um, company provide mentors for your interns? Yeah, so one of the things that um, Burdell mentioned, or I can't remember if you mentioned, um, we're part of the African American Network. And every time we have an intern or BLP that comes into the organization, we typically, within that function, will find a person that is a part of the network to partner with them. So for instance, in IT, we had a new hire um, about six months ago. He's on the BOP program. When he came into the IT function, I received an email from HR to let me know he was there. I reached out to him and I talked to him to try to gauge what, what, what did I think he was missing. So for instance, one of the things he talked to me about um, on the first day I met him was, well, do I need to clock out to go to lunch, right? Or do I need to tell someone or ask permission to go to lunch, right? And, and that's a simple question. And I'm like, no, you just need to go to lunch. And so what I realized throughout that conversation is there are some skills and some, some discussions that he probably needed to have. I could have had the conversation, but I actually called Bill and said, hey, I have this young man. Could you reach out to him and mentor him for me? Because again, as an African-American man walking into the, in, the, in the hallways of Synchrony, his experience is gonna be different from mine. It doesn't mean that I'm not there as a resource, but there are some things that as a man he may ask that I can't help him with. Okay, can you, well, my name is Kennedy. Can you like really explain what a Fortune 500 company is? Great question, from St. Louis, right? I'm from Atlanta. Okay, we'll take that. I live in Atlanta. College Park? Yes. <laughs> when you think of Fortune 500, um, they, you fall into that population by an assessment that's done uh, relative to your, your overall net worth and, and where you sit in the marketplace. So Fortune 500 are your, your biggest players. A lot of times it's driven by what the gentleman asked earlier, where you reside from a stock perspective, but quite frankly, it's your overall net worth in the marketplace. Okay, and can you talk about how you were saying with like the racism or you know how people, how, it, how being black in the Fortune, 5, um, Fortune 500 affects you? And I can speak for myself specifically. Uh, I wouldn't call it racism. I think we would call it unconscious biases, right? And when I say unconscious biases, we have a tendency to want to hire or work with people that we have an affiliation or an affinity with, right? So when you think of corporate America, when the majority of the people don't look like the individuals on this stage, there's a less likelihood that others are going to hire African Americans. It's a fundamental challenge. It's something that's communicated broadly. So when you have a system where the majority of decision makers and people who are hiring are Caucasian, when you think of that unconscious bias, they're gonna have a tendency to hire people who look like them 
or who went to the school that they went to or who live in their neighborhood. And that's why when I talk about that whole networking perspective, it's not just networking with people who look like you, it's networking with people who don't look like you. I've had people make decisions uh, on my behalf or to pull me up or to introduce me to others, just as many who do not look like me as well as ones that look like me. So you need to make sure that you cast your net wide and broad and have all gender, ethnicity, um, sexual orientation, everyone within your network because you never know who knows someone else. Does that answer your question? Thank you. When's the, when's the tough question going to come? I'm waiting on the real tough question. Are you in? Come on. I'm supposed to keep it 100, so I'm waiting on the real question. Thank you. Um, hey, how y'all doing? My name is Nautica Harris, and I'm a resident of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And my question was to you that some of you said, you know, you should make sure you get a good start. But I know that some of you hadn't exactly done that. So what are some of the hurdles you have to overcome? <laughs> Relative to our career or when we were in school? In school. Yeah. I'll jump out there first and, and then I'll, I'll let my colleagues speak to it as well. Uh, a couple things that come to mind was this notion of wanting to be in a relationship. And for any of you all who may be in a relationship, a lot of times that can potentially cloud your focus. And you become more focused on the relationship at this institution than focus on the reason why you're at the institution. It's because you're here It's because you're here that you possibly met him or her. So stay focused on the reason why you're here. And the second thing I will say is financial. I come from very humble beginnings. Mentioned I was a preacher's kid. My dad died when I was 15. So for the second half of my uh, teen life, I grew up in a single family household. When I went to school, it was only my mother and grandmother that were supporting me. A lot of hungry days, and y'all see I'm a big guy. I have always been this big, but having to be creative and figuring out ways where I wasn't calling home, trying to get extra that wasn't there. And that's a financial struggle. So being very mindful of the financial decisions that you make today, because it can put additional pressure on the people that are back home that are also supporting you. Anybody else have something? And I'll add to that as well. So how many folks here are from Mississippi? Wow, I'm so glad you're here. It's not many of us, right? So I started in Camden, Mississippi. You guys have never heard of it because it's literally a two-way stop sign. That's it, right? So for the first 17 years of my life, I had no exposure to anyone who didn't look like me. So to Verdell's point, right? So now I go into the real world. I moved to Atlanta. Little country kid who knows nothing, right? The first year, I went to Alcorn Historical Black University. So. I had a good time, I had a real good time, right? So, so then I go to Atlanta and I have to make up for having that really good time. So I end up working much harder than a lot of folks needed to because I need to make up ground. I end up working two and three jobs because I need to make up to get to a certain place. So the repercussions to me of not taking this as serious as potentially I could have is it caused me a great deal more work I probably could have been where I am now, perhaps a little bit quicker. To Bradell's point, there's always a relationship involved, right? And sometimes you gotta prioritize concerning what's really important, right? But I would say, you know, we all don't start the same place. Sometimes it requires more focus than others to get to where we wanna be, but you have to cherish this moment. I would have given anything when I was a freshman to have someone on stage to have this conversation with me right to tell me this so please listen and take it in and really stay focused to make your life easier you you you, you have asked one of the great questions i know going to come out of it but i'm gonna put it in a financial perspective for you so my decisions to not start off real good academically cost me between 30 and fifty thousand dollars coming out of college so while I came out of college making X amount of dollars, my peers that had 3.5s and above, they were making thirty to $50,000 more than me. 
Okay, so that, that's a real perspective. Okay, so while you think that it's not important for that grade, it is, but it's only one step that's important. Another thing that I, I would challenge you guys on is not get caught up in peer pressure. Just because everybody else is going to the party, just because everybody else thinks they need to dress a certain way, just because everybody else thinks that they want to drink and smoke and do all the things that y'all do because y'all are experiencing those things, that's not necessarily what you should be doing, okay? Because here's my challenge to you guys. Every semester, what we would do at college, every semester we would hang out in the union and we would look at everybody that didn't make it and we looked at every, all the new students that came through. And during your course of your college career, those that will stay here, You'll meet in the union or, or you'll meet somewhere on the yard and you'll say, well, he's new, he got new shoes on, she knew, she got a new weed, he, he knew, she, and you go through that whole stage. So my challenge to you guys is don't be the one they're talking about that didn't make it back, okay? That makes sense? Yeah. All right. So as you guys can tell, I didn't answer the question because I, I was grinding. I finished a four year degree in three and a half years and I worked full time. But here was a sacrifice, right? So while I saw my friends going to parties, hanging out, I was in the law library two or three o'clock in the morning studying. Because guess what? I didn't have parents to call. My mother has an eighth grade. Uh, my mother never graduated from high school. She dropped out of school in the eighth grade because she went to work to help take care of my grandparents. My father did get a diploma, but I'm the first girl in my family to have an undergraduate, and I'm the first grandchild, great-grandchild to have a master's degree. But guess what? Thank you. But if I, had, if, if I were distracted and I was out hanging out, and I'm not, look, y'all, everybody, everybody's story is different. Everybody's journey is different, right? But the grind was worth it, right? Because guess what? I get to vacation like I want a vacation. I get to do things that some of those friends that were kicking it, and hanging out all night and partying and not doing what they needed to do, they don't vacation like my family vacations, right? They don't, they, don't, they don't have the opportunities that are afforded to me and my family because of the sacrifice. And my aunt said something to me, um, I remember her telling me this right after I graduated from high school. She said, look, you have a lot, she's like, you have your whole life to party. She said, when you go to school, do what you're supposed to do, and then you can party the way you want to party. So if you want to go and spend money and drop whatever thousands of dollars on a nice vacation, then you can go do that. But go ahead and sacrifice now, because we reap what we sow. If you go ahead, and, and again, I think there's balance. Burdell, Burdell is right. There is a balance of, you know, work hard, play hard. I didn't play as hard, but I didn't play as hard because I knew that I couldn't call my parents to ask them for money. Most of the time they were calling me asking me for money. Right. And I also knew that because I was the first, that there was great responsibility with that. And because I sacrificed all of my other cousins, that was an expectation that you're going to go to college without any without anyone ever saying anything. So here's the thing. This experience, this journey that you guys are on is not just about you. You can determine the legacy. A number of you are the first ones. You can create this legacy for your family. For those that are the second ones or the third ones, you can continue that. As African Americans in, this, in, this, in the United States of America, we know we have to work hard. You know you gotta grind. We don't really have to sit up here and tell you this, because I'm sure y'all, your parents, you see them. You see them grinding. You see them working two and three jobs. You see them barely making ends meet, right? And there may be a few of you that are fortunate enough where you don't have to have that experience. But, but my point is, you are really setting the tone, not just for yourself, but for your children, your children's children, your children's children, and even Pookie them, who on the block, who might just change his mind and pay attention in school because he saw you do it. So don't take this experience lightly. And then also think about the fact that guess what? There was a time where you could not even have the opportunity to go to college. There was a time where we didn't have HBCUs. This is a privilege for you to be here it's a privilege for you to have these wonderful administrators to help you succeed, but it is your responsibility for you to do your work. Can we keep it 100? All right.
So we've heard both ends of the spectrum. I actually had a pretty balance where I worked hard and played hard and I enjoyed my college experience all around from hitting the ground running my freshman year to pledging a sorority my junior year to working and maintaining and maintaining my grades. Um, but one of the, the key factors in, in my ability to land a job and, and get paid after graduation was working with the Office of Career Services. I stayed in the Office of Career Services um, starting my freshman year, making sure my resume was on point, making sure I went to mock interviews, making sure I did my career assessment. I changed my major six times because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Well, I knew, but I wanted to make money. And sometimes you have to decide between following your passions or finding what other ways to make a mean. And I couldn't afford to intern for free. I wanted to be paid. Um, and so through that guidance, I was able to have a job before I even graduated. I spent my second semester of college chilling because I had a job. Signed my offer, knew where I was going. Um, and still was able to enjoy college. So I think overall it is balanced and you will sacrifice at some point in your life, um, but just make sure you enjoy it because tomorrow's not promised. So you definitely still need to enjoy your life and your experience in undergrad. Hi, my name is Kadarius and I'm from Texas County, Arkansas. As a freshman, we sit here and we look at y'all and we see success. So like, what's one thing that y'all do outside of y'all job that y'all give back to your community? Yeah, so there are two things that, that I do. So um, I went to the University of Georgia. Um, I continue to mentor and coach um, college students, both on the undergraduate and graduate level, because that's an area that I'm passionate in. The other thing that I do is I am also a counselor at my church because I like to connect with people. And, and again, I want, it, it, it's kind of the coaching. I think um, the young lady there is a coach. I love the coaching aspect of it, but I believe everybody wants to be heard. Everybody has a story, but everybody needs an accountability partner to see in them what they can't see in themselves, but hold them accountable for it. So I, uh, I'm a deacon son, so I'm very involved in my, in my church, and I'm also a, a member of a fraternity, and, we, and a part of our charter is to be you know, civically minded and be involved in our communities. Uh, but I think you know, to your, answer your question, it, it's really all about finding your passion uh, outside of work. Because you can work and, you, and work is a means to an end, but at the end of the day, you want to have somebody to be able to say something good about you when you leave this world. So my, my challenge to you guys, and I'm going to leave you with two things, my challenge to you guys is that what's going to be in your dash? I was born in 1965 and I'm going to leave this world 2065, you know, if I live to be 100 years old. But what's going to be in your dash? What are you going to leave behind? What legacy are you going to leave behind? And legacy, I can do all the things great at work, but when they stand over me when I die, they're not going to say Bill Buford was a great worker. They're going to say, well, was he a good person? Was he a good father? Did he belong to a church? Did he have a purpose in life? Did he stand for something? Or did he fall for everything? So I'm going to leave you with, I, I put, and then I'll, and I, I'll leave you with this, and I'm going I'm to hurry up. I put people in three categories. And I look at it from a tree perspective. You got tree leaves, you got tree limbs, and you got tree trunks. Okay? Tree leaves are people that come in your life that are going to blow away when the storm comes. When you need some money, when you need something to eat, when you need a ride home from college. Tree limbs are people going to hang around a little while longer. But when the hurricane comes, they're going to snap off and blow away too. But then you got those tree trunks. Those tree trunks will stay with you through thick and thin. You can be broke as the Ten Commandments. You're going to have no money. You're not able to come to back to school. you got to sleep on their floor. They'll give you your last. And that tree trunk will be with you for the rest of your life. My challenge to you is, who is your tree trunk? And if you don't have a tree trunk, you better go find some. Hi. So, Mr. Lewis, you hinted earlier when you were discussing the questions that we all were able to ask. Um, as some of the, the negative aspects you all face in corporate America. So I was curious as to, I was curious as to what motivates you all, whether it be intrinsically or extrinsically, um, to continue to work for a corporate America who doesn't understand your culture nor appreciate the value you bring to their company as a black individual. Phenomenal question and thank you for asking. 
again, I want to say phenomenal question. I think a couple things. One, the notion of competition. I'm very, I'm highly competitive. And to know that there are people out there who may or may not understand the strength and the value that I bring to an organization drives me to work even harder to prove that I can succeed. I think secondarily is the sense of family. When I first started talking to you all, I mentioned I had a high school daughter. I also have a middle school son. And to know that I have two people that I brought into this world and they're looking for me to guide their path, to direct their path, but to also be an example. So for the days that I feel down, for the days that I feel low, for the days somebody that made me really mad, or I don't think I can overcome a challenge, all I have to do is think about them, and it makes me fight a little harder. And I really, really hope that today's discussion was meaningful and impactful for you all, because the thing that I mentioned early on it's not about us, it's about you. You all are our future. I've brought people with me, the school, your institution have allowed us to sit on the stage and to show you some successful African Americans that may not have had the easiest road, but we've made it. And when I say we've made it, meaning we're educated, we work for a great company, some of us may have pretty cars. Some of us may have good looking spouses. Some of us may have big homes. Some of us may have large bank accounts. But more importantly, we know that you all can have all of that as well if you apply yourself. So I want to thank you all for the questions. I want to thank you all for your attention and participation. I want to thank Shirley and the Career Services Office for allowing us to be here. We're hopeful that we're able to come on campus again in the future. And I'll close this by saying, did I keep it 100? Yes, you did. Thank you.